is this some kind of from software game? No, although it can also be pretty frustrating at times, it's Demon's Crest on the Super Nintendo. This is the third entry in the Gargoyles Quest series, which is a branch for the Ghosts and Goblins or Ghosts and Ghosts series, known as Makai Mura in Japan. It's definitely a lot edgier than the first two games, but I'll get to that in a minute. We should talk a little about the plot first. Like in Gargoyles Quest, you control Firebrand. The game seems to come in at least three different things, but Firebrand is the name Capcom sticks with in the end. Anyway, six gens containing powerful elemental crests end up falling to the demon world, causing a civil war between demons, and Firebrand is the one to get all the crests in the end. Since he was weakened from the battles, the cowardly villain with very unfortunate name, Phalanx, takes advantage of the situation to attack and steal the crests on top of causing a great fire in the demon world and pinning the blame of Firebrand, who is then thrown into a Coliseum prison for a long time. When you start the game, Phalanx is ruling the world, so you must make your escape, take back all crests, and get your revenge on Phalanx. The story doesn't quite end with the introduction sequence. The game does have a bit of a narrative presence very similar to Mega Man X, and what you do is never vague or directionless. You get some dialogue here and there, nothing excessive, but more than enough to tell this story. What really surprised me is finding out this game has more than one ending. I'm not going to spoil how many and how you get them, but before Crown Trigger, how many console games had multiple endings? Not many, I don't think. I thought that was pretty impressive. As of the making of this video, I never played Gargoyle's Quest, so I can't compare the games. I can just say I had a lot of fun with this one. Firebrand can stay me there indefinitely, move horizontally, and shoot attacks that depend on the form you take. You gain different forms with the crests you collect. It's not complicated to control, with only two buttons you need to be aware of most of the time. The flight might seem restrictive and stiff, but this game rarely demands much in way of constant dodging around. It definitely felt less brutal than any of the goals in games, and definitely slower paced than Mega Man. Mega Man is probably the main inspiration. The quests are essentially this game's boss weapons. You need to select them in the menu and they replace your current attack. Some bosses even take more hits from certain kinds of attacks or no damage at all from the wrong attack. For better or for worse, the game is a lot less punishing than Mega Man if you just stick with the default attack. Just keep in mind you're limited to one fireball on the screen. Might seem like a big deal, but I thought it fit the slow, methodical pace of the game well. Some people will be turned off by this though. You can equip items or scrolls called Velum in this game if you really need to. The items have some variety in case you want to quickly exit levels without manually backtracking as you explore for power-ups. But money is very easy to come by, so you have almost no reason to buy and use anything but ginseng, which is an item that restores you to full health. Spells are worse in this regard. I never saw much using them when facing bosses which are the hardest part of the game. This means spells are only useful when dealing with regular enemies, and I can't think of a reason why you would use anything but the screen clearing spell, appropriately named DEATH. Now when you tell them do you like death, then DEATH, you can actually deliver on your word.
levels can feel short, but I don't consider that a bad thing. The game can get frustrating at times, you're expected to die often. If you're aiming for the best any or completing the game, you're gonna have to revisit levels for their alternative paths and secrets, which there is a healthy amount of. The levels being short made this backtracking surprisingly tolerable, even more so when you get the ability to fly upwards. This is my favorite part of the level design, and this is a game meant to be finished in one go, so I would always remember what levels to go back to and find a new path after unlocking more quests. That's definitely also borrowed from Mega Man X in particular, but I kinda prefer it this way. In X, I never felt good having to revisit entire levels for this. From my research, this was a compliment the game got even in its release year, but this looks quite gorgeous. And surprisingly so, it is a Capcom game. Capcom were masters of making good looking SNES games. I've seen complaints of areas looking too similar. I don't agree at all. There is a level of dark, edgy constants throughout the entire game, but the areas look pretty distinct, each with a theme and each with very different layouts. The sprites are my favorite part. I love the deformed but still very detailed and more mature look of the sprites compared to the chubby, chibi aesthetic of the first two games. Characters like Firebrand and Arma look just tall enough for this type of game, with really cool animations. The sprite work was what convinced me to try the game out in the first place. And I really think this is the kind of cool design only Japanese designers like to pull off. I always had this impression Western artists focus a lot more on making demons and monsters look repulsive or creepy, while Japanese go with a cool and weird style. This is definitely my preferred approach. I wish I could say the music is great. It's certainly serviceable and it starts off pretty strong. The title screen music definitely had me excited, and the first level had a memorable track. But then after that, it kind of blends together. It sets the mood, but definitely is one of those games you just end up forgetting the music is playing. I think they could have some more variety. I mean, come on, organ pipes aren't the only instruments that allow for somber music. We are the kazoos, the trumpets! I say the controls were fine and the game was low paced enough that your armor ability didn't need much work. I'll say this though, that is definitely not true when you deal with the final boss. Without spawning what kind of boss it is, the game throws so much crap at you it felt like I was being asked to play a bullet hell with stiff flying controls. The level of reflexes required becomes so crazy, you start to forget how the flying works and get yourself killed. I was aiming for 100% completion, but the difficulty spike was so insane I gave up trying. Which is a shame because Firebrand is a badass and I made him fail like a complete pushover. I don't know why it took me so long to play this game, it went from being an interesting looking difficult edgy game to an absolute recommendation for any fans of the Super Nintendo or 16-bit retro games. I don't think it will blow your mind, but if you're looking for a cool, straight to the point demon themed adventure with surprisingly detailed plot with a sprinkle of Mega Man on top, you should get Demon's Crest. This is available on Nintendo Switch Online, which is the version I used for this review. On SNES Online you do have the option of using both a rewind and save state feature. I didn't feel the need to do it since the game was incredibly generous with the checkpoints and unlimited continues, which is how every difficult game should do if you ask me. It's such an ancient game, I'm sure you'll find a way to play it if you really don't want to subscribe to NSO just for this. I wouldn't expect to see this in any kind of re-release outside of Nintendo consoles anytime soon, but you never know. 
we did get Mega Man Legacy collections on every platform. Overall, I love the style of the game and don't let me feel that it's too late. I demand a sequel Capcom, as long as it looks nothing like that Ghosts and Goblins remake. I picked this game as part of a monthly review challenge. Shout out to Retro Hangover's podcast Discord server for organizing these and other fun challenges. Rating is not mandatory for the challenge, but I'm going to make an exception anyway. I rate Demon's Crest a firebrand out of a general armor. Sorry Firebrand, you're not that cool. Now if you excuse me, I failed the true final boss again and I'm gonna look for a useless object to destroy in real life. Thank <laughs> you. 